filming the first video of fall. Seasons are changing, the weather is changing, it's getting darker much faster. It's getting colder and colder with every single day. But this won't stop us from making beats and uh, it's it won't stop me from making videos. I'm bringing you this record, Stanley Clark. I want to play for you. It's a record that was released in 1979 by Epic Records, which was one of the major publishing companies. And I think it still is one of the major publishing companies. Stanley Clark debuted in 1973 and I want to play for you is his sixth official uh, studio album that he released. It really came at a pivotal point of his career. The record builds on his previous success and his previous experience. Uh, the album is a gatefold and it's a uh, double album. It has two long plays inside of it. It has a very cool and interesting concept. It's essentially two albums in one, packed in one cover, okay? The first uh, the first part of the album I would refer to as a uh, studio side of the album. It, con it contains a mix of original studio performances that were recorded in a studio. It features uh, several collaborations with other art artists. M notable tracks from this um, part of the album are Rock and Roll Jelly and I Wanna Play For You. The second part of the album, often referred to as Live Album, uh, contains Stanley Clark's live performances from New York City and Detroit. And it really captures his energy and excitement of Stanley Clark's performances. This side includes tracks like School Days and The Streets of Philadelphia. The track which I sampled is titled I Want to Play For You, just as the title of the record. The song expresses Clark's passion for music and his uh, connection, deep connection with the audience emphasizing the joy of performing. Uh, the song I want to play for you really blends well with the next track that comes after I want to play for you. Just a feel feeling. The two tracks are kept in the fusion between jazz and funk. If I want to play for you is about excitement that's shared with the audience, Just a feeling emphasizes the uh, Clark's uh, side of the performance. The, it's about his feelings, what he feels when he's on stage, on the stage. I Want to Play For You uh, achieved really good commercial success. It uh, debuted on the Billboard 200 on the 34th place. It also received a critical acclaim, further cementing Clark's uh, position in the leading as a leading artist in a contemporary fusion. Clark even got two Grammy nominations for this album. First was for the song "The Dancer," received a nomination uh, for the best R&B instrumental performance, while. I Want to Play for, for You received a nomination for Best Male R&B Performance. The record just, it looks like this. He's on a, one side, he's just holding uh, his guitar and on the back cover, he's just smoking a cigarette or it's a cigar, I'm sorry. And inside of the record, you have a bunch of photos from his live performances, which really, you know, um, points out that this album could have live performances inside. If you actually listen to this thing, you become very disoriented how to say anything about this record. I don't know if it's a thing for for, for, for all the jazz fusion records, but uh, Stanley Clark on this record, he managed to combine jazz with funk, with rock, and even he just put some one reggae song, which is, in my opinion, is not, I'm not really a fan of reggae music, but on this record, it sounds quite good. And to, you know, top it all off, 
he uh, decided to put live performances on the, this album and I have to tell you that the live performance and the studio sets, they it's hard to tell the difference. When it comes to sampling history of this record, this thing, I don't, I, I believe it hasn't been sampled that much. But what I know for sure is that Stanley Clark has been sampled many, many times in the history. Two songs that were sampled the most were Slow Dance and Yesterday's Princess. The drum break from Slow Dance was used by uh, Nas it in Ain't Hard to Tell. That, that drum break that's in their song, it's actually from Stanley Clark's record. It was also, the, the song Slow Dance was also used by uh, DMX, Biggie, Nas, I mentioned him, uh, Madlib, probably J Dilla sampled him. So he's no stranger to the hip hop world. I Wanna Play For You isn't his the most sampled song. I cannot recognize any songs that actually use the sample. I chose it for its uh, punchiness. I chose it for its bass line and I chose it for the lyrics. I believe, I think, it's just, it's awesome. The song is awesome, especially if you play it on 45 RPM. I have a small, quick story to tell you about this record. So I was just, I was explore browsing through records, digging through records, and I found this one. Uh, it wasn't my first time I came across this record, but I never really gave it a chance. But I, at that time, I decided to actually listen to, to the record. I randomly picked a song and I swear to God, I chose I Wanna Play, play For You. If you listen to that song anywhere, uh, it's very slow, very, very slow. I cannot even tell you the BPM of the song, but uh, it's very, very slow. And what I know from the experience with uh, sampling, if you have a very, very slow song, what do you do? You just put it uh, on 45 RPM on your turntable and you got and you got a song basically you don't even need to sweat you just well you just need to sweat to make it but you don't really need to put much effort into chopping into sampling because you already have this high pitched 2000 um hip hop golden era of hip hop vibe it's like you know this cheap chipmunk soul this leads us to the main thing I wanted to tell you, I wanted to share with you. I wanted to tell you what I think are the advantages of sampling, of finding a song that fits sampling at 45. Uh, the main thing is I think that I believe it doesn't distort the audio so much as if you were to sample the song and then pitch it up. When you record a song at 45, I think it sounds way better than just pitching up it manually on a... It, it just, it preserves the quality of the song, the original quality of the song. Recording at 45 gives you this unique sound that you wouldn't be able to recreate on an SB. It gives you that unique, unique feeling. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to tell you in this part. I want to thank all the people who um, left the nice comments, likes, and I wanted to thank people who subscribe to the channel. It's awesome and the channel is getting closer to 100 subscriptions. Um, I don't know if it's a lot, it's, it's, it's for sure a lot to me. I never thought I would hit like 10, but uh, it's awesome. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for likes. Thank you for commenting. I wanted to ask you to leave your suggestions, to leave your uh, thoughts in the comments because I would really love to engage with you more. I would even love to, you know, speak with you, but I would really love to hear your uh, opinions. I would, even if somebody doesn't like it, I would love to hear why you didn't like it and uh, any future suggestions, any, any uh, comments, how could I improve? my beat making, 
I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm really open and willing to engage in a uh, smart conversation in a smart, uh, in a smart, civilized way. Thank you and see you on the next one. Of course, I would forget about something. Uh, I wanted to show you the records I bought recently. I got really, really a little bit carried away, and I bought too much. That's just uh, that's just my thing. So on on Friday, I bought the Masqueraders. Everybody gotta no. Everybody wanna live on. Great song like record. I already sampled one song from 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 this thing. Ronnie Laws. Uh, fever very nice i think it's also fusion jazz record i bought it not really for sampling but for you know pleasure listening randy Craw crawford everything must change also great record randy crawford i would say she's on the border of she's in between jazz and soul very nice singer very nice voice great for sampling I haven't really touched it yet. I haven't really sampled it yet uh, because I don't really have time. And I find samples way too way too fast to catch up with everything that I have. Next, the OJ, so full of love. I bought it mainly for one reason. One of my favorite songs is Ninth Wonders uh, Baby Cry, our Cry Baby. He sampled Cry Together from this album. And it's just, I just, I cannot tell you how much I love it. I think it's the best song I have, best song I ever listened to. I cannot really recommend you anything else. Just listen to that song. It's from his album. It's from Zion, the one on the cover with uh, two people standing in a, like a field. Next one, Gloria Lynn by Popular Demand Greatest Hits. I sampled the whole uh, record, uh, the whole two, so two, two sides. It's amazing. It's a jazz record. It's really full of nice vocals. If you're familiar with the um, with the uh, producer Apollo Brown, this record really fits his aesthetics of making beat. Rodney Franklin haven't sampled it yet. It's a nice fusion record. Sonia Salvis. Uh, it's from Czechoslovakia. It's like Czechoslovakian funk. I really haven't uh, listened to it. And The Spinners, Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow. Great soul and funk record. And I think that's all. Uh, before I let you watch the other part of the video, I just wanted to tell you that I deleted probably the most important part of the video. The one where I talk about patterns, where I talk, where I describe uh, the drums, how I made it. It was I was very proud of it. I made it very very detailed. I was very proud of the technique that I came up about extracting bass line out of the sample because that song has a very very um, vibrant and loud bass that I wanted to use, but I didn't know how to and I came up with this brilliant idea and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I was very proud of it, but I just deleted it from my phone and now it's gone. So this time it'll be just me talking about records, me talking about the records I got and the beat. That's all. I'm very, very sorry. I'm so just when I realized I deleted that video, my heart just felt to my stomach. I thought I had everything under control, but that's just beginnings. Uh, thank you for your patience and um, you know, you know what's coming next. Thank you.
Hey yo, my attitude is subject to change I mess around and spit 12 at the driver's side door of your range Six hit you, the upper six up in your dame Mafia style, leave you with your watch and your chain So take heed that, not only can I flow, I can aim Cause y'all misdemeanor niggas can't stand the rain Better believe that, whenever I see y'all, I'ma test ya Only cause I know the baggage respect pressure Hardcore like shit you get kicked out the yard for Kiss ain't the cops, but I lock niggas up You can meet me in my cellar, so can sock niggas up Fall the flow go, you can let your dough show Put your money on the table, we can battle on cable Your hot dog niggas get neighbors Fuck around with Jason, my shorty from the lock John Blunt, cool out, out. Yeah. don't beat yo Throw the tool out, let's run these niggas Kidnap, they work, make them move out Crush cash, hands just like glass Keep the heat in the dash, did some dirt with some work Caught the gas, the flicker rock A wicked sneaker rock, a footwear Strike me out, guard sacking up joints Rack them like foot locker, this is raw Raw like fuck, kid represent Hold my words stronger than the bin store Relentless, the anthology Consolidated with the quickness Just up in the wig and blouse, kill a sickness Lex imagination, large go cards Beat the boulder squad, brains that connect Put on the older guard, specialist Icicleist, war rich, collar feeling the rich Work for a dollar, don't snakes That's why broke niggas who got hard guards Sign them up, start the wind up We John Blazing, dawning in the lineup.